Welcome to Boots on the Ground, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of the retail real estate industry. In this episode, we dive deep into the world of Retail Live, a unique and efficient trade show that's really changing the game for municipalities and retailers both. So join us as we explore a few of the key differences between Retail Live and the, I guess, more familiar or traditional ICSC conferences. And of course, hear firsthand insights from the retail recruiters and experts who we have attend those events. First off is Lacey Beasley, the president of Retail Strategies and an ICSC board member. So she'll let you know what the difference between these two events are and that you should probably be attending both. You know, several communities will develop a comprehensive plan with target industries that they want to go after or focus on. And if their target industry is something in plastics, aviation, manufacturing, there's often a trade show that allows them to attend those shows and proactively reach out to the investors and decision makers around those target industries for a recruitment plan. So if a community identifies retail as a target industry that they want to go after, what are the next steps? If you're going to look at the largest retail trade show in the country, or even in the world for that matter, you might think about ICSC Las Vegas with about 27,000 attendees. Now, ICSC has several regional shows as well, where you can show up and visit with retailers, developers, and brokers, and industry decision makers. But the trade show that we like to attend that might not be quite as well known yet is called Retail Live, where Retail Strategies attends several ICSC shows. We also attend Retail Live, and there's a very different approach to Retail Live that is extremely efficient, and it really works for municipalities. We've seen more and more municipalities attend the Retail Live show, and we're pleased to attend those as well. Let me tell you a little bit of a difference between ICSC and Retail Live. ICSC is going to incorporate a lot of education, and oftentimes you need to set up the meetings at an ICSC show in advance of that attendance. Those shows will last either one and a half to two and a half days, typically. There's a lot of prep work that goes into it. Now, the retail live shows are very efficient. They're going to be about four to five hours in the afternoon with a networking event. And you do not have to set meetings in advance. In fact, it's discouraged. The way that the format is set up is that each retailer will have a table, and it's like speed dating. You go up to the retailer's table, you spend about 30 seconds talking to them about their brand and your community, and then you follow up with them afterwards. And the key to this is all about follow-up and FaceTime. There are about half a dozen shows with Retail Live across the country, and we attend all of them. One of the largest ones is in Orlando each year. There's also one in Austin. Those are probably the largest. The one in Nashville is certainly growing. And there's several locations that you can find on the RetailLive.com website. Now, two ladies who are phenomenal, who I have deep respect for, run this entire organization. We have Stacey Mooney and Erica Darling. So I encourage you to consider attending a Retail Live if you never have. Or if you work with Retail Strategies, certainly we attend all the ICSC shows and Retail Retail live shows on behalf of our client communities so we can save our clients time by attending on their behalf and reporting back afterwards. But the key to all these retail trade shows, anyone that you want to invest in and spend time at, is all about FaceTime. It's showing up repeatedly and getting FaceTime with the investors. Whether it's ICSC or Retail Live, we're still seeing public sector participation being only about 5 to 10% of the overall attendance. A lot of the attendants you're going to see are the real estate managers that are the key decision makers, but also the brokers, the developers, the franchisees. So I always encourage you when you attend any conference to think beyond the scope of just the individual brand that you're trying to recruit to your community and think about all the decision makers that are involved. And I would say that is the hardest part of our industry is knowing that tangled web of who the right person is to talk to about the right brand. 
So if you have any questions about these retail trade shows, please let us know. Next, you will always hear a recap from our team members who attended the shows, and they'll give you a full rundown of what they're seeing as far as boots on the ground today and the trends we're seeing that are really current and relevant to these retail brands and these retail trade shows. Okay, Megan, you recently went to a retail live. Can you tell me where it was and who you met with while you were there? Yes. So my name is Megan Jimenez. I'm the retail recruiter for the Southwest Territory. I cover Texas, New Mexico, and Colorado. I recently went to Retail Live Austin, and I met with retailers, brokers, and developers, real estate managers, and regional franchisee users. Okay. Okay. Now there's multiple retail live shows, right? So why is it that you went to this one in Austin? It's regionally based and a lot of their attendees are covering my areas and they oftentimes will bring their franchisee users, which makes it very easy for us to get in front of them, talk to them about what markets they need to be looking at and keep that in front of them. All right. So what other kind of updates do you get from talking to people at Retail Live? Primarily updates on moving trends and what they're following, whether that be sandwich users are on the rise, entertainment users are trying to break into the market again. And that's really important. And we also report back to our clients who are attending for the first time who have never been to a show like Retail Live, which is like speed dating. It is not like an ICSC show. It is more so very quick, very time efficient. We are going in and getting the information we need and giving the information to these franchisees, these retailers, so that way we can all be on the same page. Do you hear chatter? I mean, what people are interested in, sort of like new trends or something to look for. And does that help you with things like site placement in the future? Yes. So there is a lot of talk about trends and what they're following. Since the show is very regionally based, it does help to see what they're doing in the state of Texas, the state of New Mexico, the state of Colorado. It helps us to track exactly what is fitting into their decision making. Um, It helps us to see that things that we once thought they wouldn't look at and they wouldn't consider are now on the forefront of, yes, we want to see it. We want to know about it. Keep us up to date. Let us know what's going on in the market. Rural communities are very much on their radar. And that is something that we need to definitely keep in front of them and remind them that these communities have what it takes to handle the size and concepts that they're bringing. They're pushing out and trying to keep on our radars as well. All right. Well, there are these variations that are happening in some of the concepts. So now they want more drive throughs or perhaps they're splitting up a big box instead of wanting the whole thing. Have you bumped into concepts that you find uh, exciting, maybe something you like that you might be able to tell us about and what kind of site that kind of concept might fit into? Yes. So. One that comes to mind is Good Neighbor and Meet Me Outside. They're they're a very unique type of space where they're not only a coffee shop, but they're also a workspace where they will look at rural markets, they will look at white box, they will look at developable land, and they can reconfigure and build to suit exactly what they're looking for. They It doesn't necessarily have to be a newer build, they will look at a older building that needs work, needs help just to put it in the heart of the community and make it a area and a safer place for the community to feel like it's at home for them and not so much of a, I guess, franchised location. It's going to feel very homely and unique to their market. Kilman's was a new one. I've I think I maybe have heard of them before, but I'm not too confident. They were like a little chocolate ice cream shop user and they were basically looked at our entire market list and was very impressed and wanted to see more of that because they fit the demographic that they are looking for. And it's a a cute idea for a lot of these markets to hold, to get onto a lot of these areas, dessert shop users. They're looking to break into areas and backfill spaces, develop spaces. So that that one was one that I was intrigued to learn more about. All right. Well, Megan, once you get back from one of these events, I know that retail strategies and our recruiters specifically update our clients, but what does that kind of update and feedback look like? What's the expected time until we can kind of get a better feel for really 
how a retailer may respond to a community or a site. So as soon as we get back, we work on our retailer update. That typically looks like, I would say, make it maybe a three to four week turnaround just because in the same time that we are working through all of the notes, we are also following up with them about if, if and when they said yes and maybe sites are put in front of them and we are awaiting feedback and we're getting the most accurate and up-to-date information. That way we know exactly what we have to work with. We know the timeline that they're looking at. We know if a retailer is looking to expand into the area in a, you know, three to six month time frame, or is it more like a one to two year time frame? So that helps set, um, I think, expectations for not only the retailer, but for our team and for the community. Um, and it helps us all gauge the like, pulse on where we're going to get from point A to point B and how we can help. All right, that's it for this episode of Boots on the Ground. We hope you've gained just a slightly better understanding of the power of Retail Live and the valuable insights that can be gleaned from these targeted trade shows. Remember, stay tuned for more insider perspectives. Like us, rate us, review us. Now, until next time, keep your boots on the ground and your eyes on the horizon.